everyone, my name is Cinnamon Toast Kid. <laughs> and last time we dated Joe, so we tried to be a home wrecker, but it didn't work out. It didn't work out at all. He ended up going back to his wife. Now I gotta pick a new dad. And I guess we're going to go with Damien because he looks like the freaking weirdest dude in here. Other than Robert. Robert's the super creep. He's gonna be he's gonna be a good guy. He's gonna be a, let's let's message him. Oh yeah. Damien seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him and get to know him a little better. I navigate Damien's dad book page, type out a message. Hey dude, you seem cool. We should hang out sometime. I sit there for a minute and see and see that Damien's typing. But then he keeps typing. And typing. Man, this guy's writing a this guy not writing a novel. I'll leave my computer and make some coffee. He's still typing. I sit my coffee and the computer <laughs> the computer finally dings. Kenpai. Oh my god. Oh, oh, there's more. I must confess my excitement about receiving your kind letter. For as you see, I do myself in available and enjoy your company. I must ask, however, for your forgiveness for however, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me as a, a gentlemanly manner as I would have liked. I would be highly flattered to your to your companionship at my residence for the afternoon tea and a stroll around my garden. Uh, yeah. D, D Blood March. That wasn't really that much of a message. It was pretty short, but we got it. Hey, Amanda, can you help me with something? Yeah. Yeah, for the last time, I'm not popping your back pimples. No, no. Can you interpret this for me? I turn the computer to man and she squints at Damien's message. I just don't understand net speak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other now? Oh, totally. This is the hot new thing. See, Dad, kids got over saying LOL and LMAO or whatever and decided what they needed was to bring back the, the 1800s. So what do I do? Where's your pen and quill? What? Did you forget to unpack the pen and quill? Dad, how you address the nobleman in regards to the upcoming, uh, debutante? Whatever. Now you're messing with me. Father, without a proper chaperone, you will never end up with a suitor worthy of our land. Huh. Or our dowry. Or, so you read Pride and Prejudice at school one time, now you're, you're, you're reciting things. Like the first five pages, then, uh, the uh, movie still got B, though. Great. So what, what do I say to Damien? I got this. Matt reaches over and types the keyboard. Sure thing, dude. Regards, Kimpai. Man hits the sand and smiles at me. Well, I suppose that's that. Make sure I walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess I can't really call it a house. It's more of a manor, a state. The gothic architecture looms above the rooms of the, the cul-de-sac. I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. I pull the large, ornately carved bat's head door knocker and hollow. God, oh, man, this guy's going all out, huh? A hollow echo sounds in the house and the strike against the door. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer. Nothing but oil portraits of who I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. <laughs> There's a dog up there. Awesome. Oh, look at these cakes and stuff, too. As I'm admiring them, the front door slams shut behind me. H Hello? Silence. An oil lamp in the corner flickers dimly, casting an ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like the people of these paintings are staring at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? Kinpai, pleasure to have you in my home. I look up and see Damien stand at the top of a majestic staircase with a walking candle holder. What's, uh, what's with the door slamming shut? Oh, sorry, there was a draft. And the door creaking when I knocked. I actually lift the door unlocked. And the creepy oil paintings. I like oil paintings. Right. Right. Please, let me show you around. Okay. Damien leads me around the house, showcasing his parlor, sitting room, auxiliary sitting room, and the parlor again for some reason. This is one of the oldest homes in the block, yes, but nowhere near as old as the, as the architecture might suggest. Through extensive renovations, I've been able to craft a resident that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of any modern dwelling. We walk past the door covered in bumper stickers, caution tape, and black parade poster. Did they listen to My Chemical Romance in the Victorian era? That's my son's room. You know how the rebellious teenage years are. Onward, onward, there's more to see. Uh. I reach the door at the end of the hall and Damien opens it with a flourish. And this is the library. Hey, look at all the butterflies on the wall. Sunlight streams in the front floor to ceiling arched windows. The walls are lined with packaged bookshelves and even more bookshelves are scattered over the period appropriate furniture. Damien is clearly really proud of this room. Pick up the book. Yeah, oh. you like that. You know, Kimpai, in the Victorian era, there were there were some controversy surrounding reading. Many people thought the more tawdy novels would encourage use into a life of crime and would cause them too much of a distraction from work and school. I pull out a book at random and examine the worn cover. Opening, I turn to a random page and read aloud. <laughs> Naruto struggled against the chains that Sasuke had bound him with. Shirtless and out of breath, he looked up at Sasuke. Sasuke skirt, Sasuke, Sasuke smirked, unbuttoning his ninja pants. Oh my god, the fan fiction! Okay, oh I think that's enough. Damien snaps the book shut and puts it back on the shelf. That's a rare book in my private collection. 
<laughs> a classic, an instant classic. Look at the butterflies. Oh, he likes all this stuff. I woke up to the glass display of pin bugs in the wall. It's pretty impressive. Nice bugs. I pinned them all myself. Maybe I should show you how sometime. I'm concerned I can stick a pin right through my finger. Ah, the pinner's gambit. Is that a thing? No. I walk to the window and I'm greeted by a beautiful view of Damien's backyard. It showcases it showcases a beautiful view of the rest of the cul-de-sac. Hey, I can see Craig in his lawn. He's doing push-ups with his daughters on his back. Dang. <laughs> he sees me and waves happily, doing push-ups with one hand now. Dang. Did you know that Victorians spend at least 20 hours a week gazing long <laughs> 20 hours a week gazing longly out full-length windows? Wait, really? No. Uh. But Victorians did appreciate telling a good joke. Please. Uh. Will you join me for tea? I follow Damien to a sitting room where finger foods have already been set out on a beautiful uh, tiered silver tray. I take a seat on top of uh, the high back chairs as Damien pours me, pours and serves me some tea. I just got served. Can't believe we were having a high tea. I never thought I'd get to this. Damien smiles to himself. What? Oh. It's a common misconception that high tier refers to the wealth or class of the people enjoying it, when in fact the high refers to both the latter time of day and working class had to enjoy had to enjoy tea at the height of the tables of which they were served. Oh, my dear friend, we're currently enjoying afternoon tea. That's informative. Maybe I should give this guy like a vampire voice. Damien, says, Damien, Damien takes a seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich. Hmm, I like a cape. <laughs> Are there a lot of goths in Maple Bay? Your own's really impressive. Yeah, yeah, make him wet. Make him wet with them cucumbers. It seems you really pu uh, put a lot of work in this place. The Thank you. <laughs> okay. No one ever compliments my home before. <laughs> is that a vampire voice or am I doing like a bad Russian accent? Heck, I, can't, I can barely match salt and pepper shakers in my place. Look what you've done. I'm kind of jealous. That's very generous of you to say. You've got some interesting goth stuff. When I was a young boy, my father. Did he take you to the city? Sorry. <laughs> Did you guys see a marching band? I'm afraid I don't understand. You're serious? Of course. But it's, you know, the song. Amanda made me listen to it. Dot, dot, dot. Seriously? Oh. I love to see a marching band. Nevertheless, blah. You gotta talk like you have big teeth in your mouth. I've always had love of art, history, and fashion. What started off as a small hobby on collecting taxidermy as animals grew as a sort of obsession. It's a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Why not go all the way? Uh. I like not dying when they catch cold. He takes a sip of tea. Uh. I can acknowledge that there are many terrible things about the Victorian era. <laughs> and I tried not to live the life strictly lines with ideas would be admittedly horrid. But I think it takes a critical mind to appreciate something to its fullest, to the cognitive flaws. Blah, 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 blah. Uh. Tell me, Kenpai, do you have any hobbies? Oh man, I do, but I don't know if I care about anything the way you care about this stuff. Well, hmm. I love to hear of your interests. Hearing something that some, someone talk about the things they are passionate about is intriguing. Uh, quite honest, rather attractive. Please, tell me about your hobby. Quick, sound sophisticated. Learn me some word jumbles. Oh, he liked that. Hang on, well, let me load real quick. I want to see what else he likes. Let me see what else he likes real quick. Uh, I don't know, I juggle once. Nope, he does not like that. Okay, let me load. <laughs> uh, made some soap. He doesn't care. Oh. All right, let me load. So I picked the right one first. Good. Uh, written word fascinates me. We spend so much time using words, you know, and uh, I think people would appreciate them more if they had to unjubble them. It's poetic, really. Oh, so you're a writer. In a sense, we finish our tea and finger sandwiches. Come, oh. I have one more thing to show you. Damien takes me around the back of his home, and a variety of flowers flourish in a beautiful landscape. Ro in beautiful landscapes. Rose. A small stone path leads to the and the butterflies flit lazily through the air. Is this his backyard? Good God. Of my garden. It's beautiful. Thank you. The Victorians took flowers and floral arrangements very seriously. Very seriously. You see, I was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public. So lovers and friends alike would use bouquets to send secret messages to each other. These flower and plants symbolic of different feelings. Oh. Even more interesting about flowers and blah, blah, extremely careful in how you put them together. Uh. Damien leans forward and plucks a gorgeous bright orange flower off a of vine. Lilium bulbiverium, the orange lily. What do you think of this one? Three cheers for sweet revenge, no. Thou art the tightest. My loins are ablaze. 
The orange leaves actually symbol of pure hatred. <laughs> okay. Let me load. Uh, <laughs> Thou art the tightest. Oh, made him wet with them cucumbers. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, cucumbers out here. The orange lily is actually a symbolic of pure hatred. Well, and that's precisely why floral arrangement is so challenging. What's your favorite type of flower? Oh, man. Uh, snapdragons. Because they're cute. They can do anything when you squeeze them, so it looks like they're talking. What a lovely choice. Oh, he liked that, but can I, can I make him squirt? Can I make him squirt, though? Let's see if I can make him squirt with honeysuckles. Now he likes that, too. But, perhaps, sunflowers. Practical choice. Nope, he didn't like that. Okay, load it back in. He didn't like that. It's my favorite type. I like, give me some honeysuckle, baby. It smells really good, and you can eat them. The tiniest drop of nectar when you pull the stem out. I'd have to remember that when they put together a bouquet for you. He, you put together a bouquet for me? Nobody's ever given me a bouquet before. I follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Suddenly, a phone rings. God, oh, Kinpai, will you excuse me? I must take this. He pulls a cell phone out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised it's not a rotary phone. Go for it. Damien smiles and walks back to the house. I take a deep breath and enjoy the heavily perfumed air. What a lovely yard. This makes me wish I'd put a little more effort into the garden of man and I tried to start one time. Our watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes and immediately died. Oh, hey, a gargoyle. Ah, oh, no, I knocked the gargoyle. I knocked over the gargoyle. That's fix garg. that garg. <laughs> start. All right, I gotta fix the garg. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Fix that garg. Sure. Dun, dun, dun. Oh. Cool! We did it! We fixed that garg! Who has a close one? Oh, here comes Damien. He looks upset. Ugh. Oh, God. That was terrible sounding. Ugh. Ugh. Kenpai, my sincere apologies to have kept you waiting. There is an urgent matter that I must attend to. I am afraid I must take my leave. No problem, dude. Everything alright? Damien worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. Everything is perfectly fine, but I, uh... It is Lucian. What's wrong? He appears to have... Well, his teacher needs me to come to the school post-haste. You need any help? Oh, no, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dad's guys stick together. You're right. But you're not, because you totally should hand this on, handle this family matter on your own. This is one of Lucian's more elaborate stunts. I would gladly treasure having another parent by my side. Let's go! Hmm. Um, well, it doesn't matter how bad that other yelp was in my ear. This dude's voice is always terrible. Damien and I walked to the school and immediately greeted by anxious-looking Hugo. <sighs> hey, Damien. You're here in record time. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear friend. Wow, whatever it is, it doesn't seem like Hugo and Damien's first time my kids are in trouble rodeo. They say that a lot. This isn't my first rodeo. It's like they constantly say rodeo in this game. It's like their favorite thing. Rodeo. Is it some kind of a... Is it a euphemism? What's going on here? But it is the time. This, oh. Damien, you have to see to believe. Damien, I fall a uh, step behind Hugo, who leads us through busy corridors of the school, past several classes and sessions. I vaguely wonder if a man is around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small boiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down to the darkness. Watch your step. I can hear a faint voices drifting up from the basement. They don't sound happy. And I'm led to the depths of the school of the antics, uh, as I recall, the antics I got as an angsty middle schooler. At least I had enough sense to stay in the creepy basements. I found another teacher in a bro uh, broiler room tucked away in the back of the basement. With them, Lucy and Ernest, Hugo's son. Lucian has a bloody nose. Thanks for coming. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and see a bunch of bricks or some masonry tools scattered around. What happened here? Ernest punched me. At least you tried to kill me. The room falls silent. I wasn't trying to kill you, dumbass. I was trying to build a brick wall around you to see what would happen. You promised me there was wine down here. You tricked me. Wine? Why do these kids want wine? That's like the last thing I assume that like a teenager wants to drink. I want some wine. I'm like, give me, give me some, give me some straight liquor, baby. Let's get drunk. Let's get crunk. Give me some beers. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second, Lucy. Did you try to cask of? Amontillado. Is that how you say it? Is that the Edgar Allan Poe book? I'm neither confirming nor denying that. I turn to Damien and whisper to him, What's a cask of Amontillado? It's a classic Edgar Allan Poe story where the man gets the enemy drunk and lures him down to the cellar with the promise of wine and find the vintage, then buries him alive behind the brick wall. It's a lovely story. So wait, Lucian, you try to do that to him? 
I was curious to see how it turned out. I wasn't actually going to leave him here. Was that the thought process here? That Ernest was going to sit still while he slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked It worked for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot, but then he realized that I'd lied about the wine. And you were cackling manically. That sort of tipped me off. Ernest, 20 minutes. Dad, it what? took you 20 minutes. Son, we just did an entire two-week unit on the cask of Armadillo. It took you 20 minutes to realize Lucian was leading you into the elaborate ruse. Did you even read the story? I read the first five pages, then read a review of the movie. Whoa. It's only five pages long. There is no movie. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I paid Lucian to read it for me. <sighs> Actually, he didn't even pay me. So when you think about it, this is me teaching him a lesson. Damien and Hugo both have their heads in their hands. You guys are always telling me to engage in literature, and I did. I don't see the problem here. All right, I'm filing this under what the hell. Don't do whatever that was again. You two are both suspended for a week. Ernest and Lucian high five. The teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. All right, Hugo, I'll cover your class. Take your son home. Mr. Blood March, you too. Thank you for your meditation, your mediation. We all head up the stairs to the school. It's pretty tense. Lucian Damien up. Oh, it's my car. My good old crappy car here. This beautiful, beautiful drawing. Lucy and Damon, I pile into the car and begin to drive home. Lucy immediately puts his hood up and starts staring out the window. I'm not going to therapy again. I know, son. It's entirely up to you. Whenever you want to, whatever or not you want to go. But I care about you and I can see you're struggling. So if you decide that you would like to speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that too. Maybe you can spend this next week looking for a summer job. Hmm? I know how much you want your own car. Can't believe Damien's keeping us cool. I'm impressed. Fine. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. I love you, son. Lucy continues staring out the window. Love you too. We spent the rest of the drive in relative silence. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucy hops out the car, slams the door, and runs inside. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. Yeah, he and I have a lot we need to work out. It's all right. And all things considered, Lucy's bricklaying is pretty good. So there's your silver lining. Ah. There is that, yes. Let's save it and see if I can make him wet with cucumbers. I really admire how you handle that. You're a lot more diplomatic than that would have been. That's what the best for him. It really does. Yeah, get them cucumbers, baby. Get them cucumbers out for me. Oh, oh yeah. See you soon. It'll be my honor and my pleasure. Damien bows the flourish. Classy. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I come home to find Amanda curled up on the couch with a blanket watching TV. I plop down next to her. Yo, what you watching? Tiny House Hunting Brothers, Extreme Edition. Uh, I hate this show. The couple on screen bicker back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made of recycled bottles. The Tiny House Hunting Brothers watch them with bemused expressions, both their heads touching the low ceiling. I told you I wanted a two-bed, two-bath, shabby, chic cottage. This house doesn't even have a bathroom. But honey, the outside is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. I am not pooping outside, Greg! Why don't they just get a regular size house? I... I don't know. How'd afternoon tea go? It got strange. We had to go to school and pick up Lucian since he tried to... Oh. He lured Ernest down to the cellar with the promise of fine vintage and tried to learn back... He tried to... Yeah. How'd you know that? Has everyone read the story except for me? Lucian live-streamed the entire thing. The entire, this entire day is beyond me. But otherwise, it was a fun day. A Damon guy's a character. But he's really good company and surprisingly a diplomatic dad. I dig his style. You know what? Me too. Day complete! Do, 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 do. Afternoon tea! Dad points! Yeah! Give me that S rank! My dear friend, you've simply taken the egg on this one. Um, t taken the egg is a, uh, it's a, <clears throat> it's a, it's a Victorian phrase. It technically means winning, so. Uh, Shut up, I like my voice better. I got dads! I like dads! Let's get that dad. All right, let's go back on our second date here. Had a lot of fun hanging out with Damien the other day. I wonder what he's up to. I open up dad book and start writing him a message when Amanda walks in the door. Dad, you got a letter. Oh, he sent me something by post. Is it from grandma? No, it's from Damien. Whoa, can I see it? Amanda hands me the piece of old parchment folded into an envelope sealed with the purple wax. Dang, dude goes all out. I pry off the seal and fold the letter. The most beautiful calligraphy, the letter reads. Uh, I don't know if I can read all this. Dearest Kimbai, I hope you'll find my continued correspondence endearing rather than trying. Only, one can only hope that use of this show, that my use of this slower, more traditional form of 
Now I gotta read his voice, don't I? This traditional form of communication will showcase my sincere and earnest settlement that I greatly enjoy our time together. <laughs> I write this hastily under the warm embrace of excitement, fearful that I may misstep and speak towards something unwelcome. For now, I hope that you might forgive my boldness. I will simply say that your company has greatly occupied my thoughts. While the afternoon may have derailed by forces unforeseen, your companionship helped a great deal. Oh, even look at that semicolon there? Or is that just colon? Ha <laughs> ha! Ooh, am I making bad jokes? All right, um... Not only will this discipline of my child, but more of my spirit, and for that I thank you. That said, Kinpai, if you'll allow, allow, allow me to, I would greatly mean the world to me if you'd enjoy more of your time. Perhaps a trip to the cinema followed by Moonless Throw would be of your taste. I eagerly await your response with great respect. Dear Blood March. Fantastic. Come on, I both look up from the letter. Wow. He's good. So you're gonna catch a movie with him? Yeah. I better message him on Dadbook, let him know. Man just slaps the laptop shut. You have to write him back! A real letter! But my handwriting looks like two toddlers fighting over a crayon. Dad, you have to! He wrote you a letter! That's cool! Will you help me? I need to class this up. Father, I was made for this. Here's what you do. Find tickets of a show you two like and then enclose them in the letter. Oh, that's classy. Man, I hop on the laptop and pursue uh, pursue showtimes. It doesn't seem like a romantic comedy kind of guy. Oh, here's one. Vampire Crusade 2? Evil never dies. I don't know. That sounds kind of stupid. Actually, it's critical claim exp uh, exploration of the... Uh, really? Nah, there's just a lot of blood and vampire titties. Well, let's roll the dice. I purge the ticket and print them out and sit down at the table and man and uh, try drafting a nice letter. I start writing. Damien. All right, we gotta make this classy AF, right? Hope this letter finds you, finds you in good health. Good one. What's next? Hey, remember when you, your son tried to cast out to the kid? You been good? I must confess of my amateur control of the written word. Jeez, Dad, have some faith in yourself. Okay, we're, tu we're trucking along. Let him know how you're feeling. If I'm in good spirits, I felt very much the same. Nice. Ask him to hang out already. True art takes time, Amanda. Let's keep it simple. Bring it home, Pops. Uh, let me take you out. I got two tickets to the movies. I would very much enjoy your company. Accompany me to the cinema. It would be a black pressure to escort you to the cinema. Smooth. Calling it the cinema is a classy move. Close, you find two tickets. Vampire say two never does, which I'm sure you'll find both, uh, both titillating and enjoyable. Best wishes, I guess. <sighs> Kenpai Dad Lord. Is this okay? Yeah, uh, get you home, my moustache. You spelled his name wrong. What? Nah, just trying to keep you on your toes. All I have to do is seal it and put it in the mailbox. Can I sell it with tape? That's not authentic enough. I have an idea. I'll be right back. Amanda leaves the room and returns with the candle. A lighter and a small piece of wood. You gotta have a wax seal. She lights the candle, which starts to burn down the pool of melted wax. What's the other thing? Uh, pours some wax in the folded letter and, and puts the wood onto it. Let's dry for a second and pulls the wood away, revealing. Here it is, your sigil. A little kitten with its bowl on its head. Awesome. Scrapbooky stuff always comes in the clutch. I guess there's gonna be a, a little doorstep now. Yeah. F it. My glasses are like squeezing the side of my side of my head. Oh, I thought we were getting a carrier pigeon to do it. I already called my guy. I have a pigeon guy. Marcus has the other has the good pigeons. Now it's weird. I can hear myself so much better. Dot dot dot. Don't get your pigeons from Anthony. They're no good. I don't want to know if he, this is true. I head outside and walk over to Damien's house. I slip the letter into the slot in this door and go back home. Mission accomplished. Now we play the waiting game. The night finally rolls around when I'm supposed to meet with Damien. The next day, he had left another beautifully crafted letter thanking me for mine agreeing to the evening. Amanda helps me pick out a nice outfit and I show up at the theater a bit, a little bit early. It's a chilly night and the theater's kind of crowded, but it's still nice. How do you do? <laughs> I jump into the sound of his voice and see Damien right behind me. He almost gave me a heart attack. How long were you there <sighs> for? I don't know. I just walked up. I just walked up. My apologies for frightening you. <laughs> Was that thunder? Is it going to rain soon? I didn't hear anything. What? Huh. What? What? Blah, regardless, the hour grows close. Shall we take our seats in the cinema? I must thank you again for purchasing our tickets. Oh. Please allow me to repay the deed and Sour Patch Kids, or perhaps Milk Duds. Let's do it. We get into the line to buy snacks as we're waiting. I hear a familiar voice behind us. Uh, Dad's here. Turn around and find Lucian standing a few feet behind us, the gaggle of other goth kids. Lucian, how nice to see you. I didn't know you were coming to the theater. I'm glad you're spelling, spending some, some quality time with your friends. Whatever, whatever, Dad. And what movie will you be attending tonight? 
friends are making me see some movie about killing animal, talking animals, and killing animals. Where did I get that from? Talking animals. I really don't care about it. Well, I do hope you enjoy your evening. We are watching Vampire Crusade 2. Evil never dies. What? You watching that? Yeah, I thought Damien would enjoy it. Ha, good luck with that, Dad. Good luck with that, Dad. Lucian rejoins his friends. I look over to Damien. Good luck with that? It's nothing. My son loves to tease. We wait in line for a little while longer, and Damien buys us snacks. He seems a little nervous. I wonder what's wrong. He probably hasn't actually been in a theater ever because it's not it's not his style, you know? Damien and I take our seats and settle in for for previews. Glancing at him, I can see he's sweating profusely and gripping his armrest. <laughs> Poor guy, he's nervous. He's, is everything okay? Vampires, huh? The movie hasn't even started yet. Oh, yeah. Everything is perfectly fine. I'm so uh, excited for this film. I am devoted to the patron of the arts, especially the scary arts. The scarier the art, the better. Do you have a favorite horror movie? I, of course I have a favorite horror movie. Mine is Halloween Town. Terrifying. Oh, interesting. That's odd. I don't seem to remember Halloween Town being that scary. I would have, he, he's scared, he's scared. I didn't expect him to bring some sort of strange horror film that I've never heard of. Damien's knuckles are turning white. Looks like he's about to rip the armrest off. Wait a second. Damien, are you afraid of horror movies? What? You must be joking. I, I love horror movies. The lights dim for the ah! film. Damien screams. I apologize. I was thinking about something far scarier than this movie, but it's not scary at all. We settle in the, as the film starts. I offer Damien some licorice and he takes one. I take note of how much his hands are shaking. Ah! The title flashes across the screen in bloody letters. Vampire Crusade 2 Evil Never Dies. Ah. A pale man with long silver hair, glittering red eyes, and well-oiled abs sit up in a coffin. Awaken my coven. Two more vampires slide the top, slide the tops of the coffin into the floor. Brother, is it time? Yes, husband, but also mortal enemy. It is time. Three look at each other and then into the camera. For the vampire crusade. This rules. The trio of vampires flies off in the night as a foreboding organ music plays in the distance. I somehow get lost in the movie. As dumb as it sounded, it's actually a pretty oh. fun flick. We get to the tense moment when, where Romulus Truebud sits, uh, sits at a truce meeting with the general of the human army whose wife Romulus has fallen in love with. Romulus, it's good to finally meet you. General, I agree. It's good to finally blood you. Romulus leaps and slashes the general's throat. Blood splatters over everything, including oh. the camera. Damien screams again, reflexively grasping my hand. I immediately blush for getting about any vampires or her <laughs> blood or vampiric blood. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Damien retracts his hand and places it back on his lap. I was writing a novel in my head about blood magic and, and got an extremely scary section. Damien goes back quietly stressing over the, out over the movie. It's kind of cute that he won't admit that he's afraid of it. It's so mean that I don't take him, I don't like let him leave. Dot, dot, dot. I wish you'd hold my hand again. Maybe I could do something to try to make him feel more comfortable. I got it. I'll do what all dads do best. Talk during the movie. Tell a dad joke. Yeah, he like that. He like that. Where, where, does, the, where does the dog go when it loses Hi. its tail? There. To the retail store. He yelled last bit too loud in the crowd movie there. I'm going to see some of oh. Damien's face. Oh. Good one, Kenpai. The rest of the movie goes by relatively smoothly with only a few whimpers from Damien. Maybe he would have liked a romantic comedy better. We get to the final scene of the movie where Romulus Bad Blood and the general's wife embrace each other in this screen. Is crypt. He took the general's wife after the general took his wife, huh? It appears the true vampire crusade was the vampire crusade in our hearts. Our cold, unbeating hearts. Romulus and general's wife begin making out hard. What? The film fades to black and the end appears on the screen. But then it hard cuts Demetrius and his, his rival lover, Cam C uh, Carmela, who watched the two from afar. Oh no. Twist ending. Demetrius. I've, uh, Our bloodline has been pure for a thousand years. Romulus has betrayed us by loving a human woman. It must be a short time. It must only be a short time before the next. Vampire Crusade 3. Evil must die again. More thunder. More ominous, gr more, more ominous organs. And the movie fades out again. And bloody question mark now accompanies the end. Damien and I walk out of the movie theater almost amidst throngs of chattering moviegoers. He's a little more pale than I remember, but otherwise he survived the encounter. He even seems kind of invigorated. Oh. What an interesting film. While the, the premise immediately struck me as pedestrian, 
I was intrigued by his harrowing love story and great attention to detail in regard to the vampiric lore. Yeah, it was pretty good. A lot more vampire titties than I thought there would be. Come, the night is young. Let's take a stroll. Yeah, the vampire titties. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Damien's making a point of not telling me he's... Uh, tell, uh, not telling me where he's taking me. Still, I'm enjoying the walk. And the, oh my god, he's gonna take me. He's gonna take me somewhere and bite my neck. Uh, being alone with Damien is a lot better than being in a crowded theater. Lovely night, isn't it? As lovely as the company, yes. He thinks I'm lovely. Dang, okay, here comes a smooth response. <laughs> All these cool responses that I have. Thanks. No problem. Hmm. Crushed it. We must stand there feeling a little awkward. Smooth operator. Are you getting a little hungry? I could maybe stop off and grab something to eat. Very not, friend. I have a plan. We turn the corner and are greeted by the gates of a cemetery. What? Are we going in there? A little bit of Victorian flavor came by. Trust me. Hmm. I'm a bit nervous, but Damien hasn't led me wrong yet. I follow his lead as we walk into the cemetery. Statues of angels stare down at us and follow the path that fades in the faded tombstones. As we crest a small hill, we get a beautiful view of the city. The night lights sparkle around us. I gotta hand it to him. For being a cemetery, this is strangely romantic. Picnicking in graveyards is an old Victorian tradition. An appropriate finish to an evening after a vampire movie, wouldn't you say? The flourish Damien produces a, 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 a blanket and a picnic basket. Is there music right now? Oh man, I, I didn't realize this music though. Mm, this graveyard music. Oh yeah, in the graveyard. Uh, 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 uh. Wait, where are you hiding that? Oh. Under my cloak? Oh right. Damien unfolds a blanket we both sit down, gazing at the city lights. He brews a little red wine, fine selection of cheeses. In the Victorian era, there are no public art galleries, parks, or botanical gardens to speak of. Once rural graveyards become more popular alternative to church burials, they became the only place that people could see beautiful plant life and fine sculptures. That makes sense. It's pretty nice. I have a question, though. How are you okay with being in a graveyard, but you have trouble handing a scary what? movie? I... I wasn't. He sighs deeply. Okay. Yes, I was extremely scared about that movie. Uh, I was not writing a book about blood magic in my head. I just... Blah. I've never had to... I've been good at those. I just feel as if, because of how I blah look and act, people expect me to love horror films. Blah. So I must play as the part. Truth be told, I don't know if I have the constitution for them at times. Blah. Blah. Damn, I'm sorry. If I had known, I would have suggested another movie. It's quite all right. I actually did find myself enjoying this one, thanks to your help. Graveyards, however, I think there's something rather beautiful about death. Cemeteries and traditions are built away from the cities, away from the realm of the living, and keeps it rather separate from us. Blah, to acknowledge death and become comfortable with it, I think gives us a, a certain limited knowledge of ourselves. I keep kind of changing his voice. I'm going like between bad accents and just like not talking like I have fangs in my mouth. To sit amongst generations of those who came before us, to be truly alive in the midst of such death brings me great comfort. Death helps me appreciate that, blah. To save for every second, blah. We sit and enjoy our food and wine. I don't feel scared anymore. Never thought I'd be comfortable sitting alone in the graveyard at night, but I actually feel very peaceful. Huh. Suddenly, it doesn't seem like we're alone. Off in the distance, I see shadowy figures in the trees. What is that? Ah. I'm not sure. Huh. It notices us. I'm paralyzed with fears, begins lumbering slowly towards us, its shape taking more animal form, more feral. I look to Damien for help, but he's just as afraid and transfixed as I am. I want to scream, but it's stuck in my throat. The creature's getting closer, moving ah. faster. Woof! Oh, huh. it's a dog. <laughs> Corey, look at that little derpy looking dog. It finally comes to the light of uh, the friendliest, dumbest little Boston Terrier I've ever seen pulls its owner towards us. The dog trots over to Damien and sniffs his hands. Damien looks ecstatic. He ruffles the dog's fur happily. Huh. What a beautiful dog! Hey. But look up. No, not expecting to see. Oh, God. Thanks. God dang it, Robert. Oh. Robert, what are you doing here on this such lovely evening? Uh. Hunting cryptids? Mm. What? Mm. What? <laughs> now you had a dog? This isn't my dog. I found her wandering in the street and I put a leash on her and now we're walking around this graveyard together. Hunting cryptids. Uh. Cryptids. Damon, I share a look. May I give her a treat? Oh. Sure. Wait and give her cheese, though. Not to worry. Damien reaches in the depths of his cloak and produces a small dog treat. What else is he keeping in there? The dog laughs at the treat and crunches away, wagging his tail wagging furiously. Damien continues to smooth down her fur. Thanks. Yeah. My absolute pleasure. Damien shakes the dog's paw. 
Lovely to meet you, my friend. May our path cross again. Robert and his question mark dog appear to be to disappear in the darkness again. Damien stares after them. You know you like dogs? The Victorians love dogs, actually. Most Victorian women of high fashion would always be copied by a small dog such as a terrier or a Maltese. But uh, I think big dogs are nice too. <laughs> yeah, man, dogs are cool. I do believe we've had enough excitement for one night. Ah, blah. To say we make our way home. Yes, blah. Damon hops to the feet and extends a hand to help me up. I gladly take it as my knees aren't what they used to be. He packs his picnic basket and leads inside the graveyard. As we get to walk home, I take one last look at the cemetery. It really is beautiful. Like a proper gentleman, Damien walks me to my doorstep. Thank you ever so kindly for, for the, your company tonight. Damien, it's my pleasure. Kenpai, if you allow me, it would bring me great joy to offer you a token of my affection. Oh. Damien reaches his cloak and pulls out a folded, monogrammed handkerchief. He presses it into my hand. Wow, thank you, Damien. I'll use it to dry the tears of those I've lost. Ah, oh, yeah, got him, Brett. Got him, those two covers, baby. Get those two covers. A noble purpose. Yeah, Damien shuffles his feet. <laughs> I just want to say that it's rare to find someone like you, blah. Someone who's open to my eccentricities. It's blah. Nice to be accept so accepted, feel so accepted. Blah, thank you. Damien gives my hand a quick squeeze. Damien blushes and hastily retracts his hand. Ah, oh, I must take my leave. Good night. Before I can say anything else, he's gone. Huh. I unlock the door and step inside. Hey. Got them eggplants all over the place out there, girl. We just got so many eggplants. Like a whirlwind, Amanda runs from the window and plops down on the couch trying to look nonchalant. Huh. Hey, Dad, what's up? Were you watching me from the window? No, I was just, uh, okay, yes. How was the movie? Lots of vampire titties. Told you. But as it turns out, Damien is, oh. wait, man doesn't need to know that. I'll keep it between me and Damien. Scary cool, yep, he's he's cool, it's scary. Nice save, Kempa. Did you know that graveyards used to be a place to throw parties? I think I'm, mes I'm misremembering oh. that. Wow, that's pretty punk. Sure, punk, punk, punk is graveyards, right. Also, we saw a dog. Definitely thought it was a werewolf for a minute, though. How can you be sure it wasn't a werewolf? How can you be so sure I'm not a werewolf? And how can I be so sure you're not a werewolf? Amanda's eyes narrow. I don't trust you, nor are you. You make intense, wary eye contact for a second. Anyway, I'm calling it for the night. Don't stay up too late, will ya? Try not to howl at the moon past midnight. Date complete! Let's see if we can get that S ranking. Give me that S, baby. Oh, maybe not. Oh, wait, maybe so. S ranking. Yeah. He simply Shut up. Yeah. Let's message him. I'm sure. I'm committed to this sexy boy. Ever since we had that picnic in the graveyard, Damien and I have been spending a lot of time together. We go on nighttime strolls pretty regularly. He was so impressed with the first letter that I wrote him that he insisted we only communicate by post instead of through dad book. I initially protested, but he gave me one of his old signet rings used as a seal for my letters, and I just couldn't say no. Hang out with that goth dad again? Please, Amanda. You know his name. And yes. Be honest with me here, Pops. Is he actually a vampire? I remember you inviting him into your household that one time and I've seen the Lost Boys and I honestly wouldn't prefer to say him. Yes, Amanda. I have become Damien's familiar and I am compelled under his curse. I'm sorry, sweetie. Dad. Turn into a bat. I don't think... Aww. What's the point of being a vampire if you can't turn into a bat? Well, okay, I'm off. Are you taking the car? Are you flying off <laughs> the night in the leathery wings of a bat? One of those. While I'm out, you can throw away the garlic bread that's in the freezer if, so I don't die. That'd be great. I'm keeping it <laughs> in there as insurance. You understand, right? That's my girl. Oh, we're going to the yacht again. Do we always go to the yacht? Damien and I walk along the water's edge chatting. Damien's cape, I mean cloak. He hates it when people call it cape. Damien's cloak flutters behind him in the breeze. This is going to seem like a silly question, but why do golf wear black? Gothic subculture has always been associated with death, so it would make sense that the style surrounding it would be greatly influenced by mourning. Interesting enough, though, was that in the Victorian age, Queen Victoria herself mourned the death of her late husband for ten whole years, wearing black for the rest of her life. If that's not goth, I don't know what is. I have another question. Uh, Go ahead. How are you so comfortable with death? You mentioned in the graveyard that it helps you appreciate your life or something? 
Uh, I've accepted several losses over the course of my life. I truly believe that only the manageable way to cope with it is to accept death. It's the single universal truth that every human has ever lived. Ah, Vlaya, I am going to die, and you are going to die, and life carries on without us. Does that make you feel scared? Not at all. Without the advances in modern science, death is everywhere in the Victorian era, and yet funerals were major social functions. Victorians were obsessed with mementos of their loved ones, even going as far to elaborately stage photographs of their dead relatives. I can't read. It's such a scary thought, though. I hate that thought that I'm gonna die. But we're all gonna die. Blah, the miniature of the 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 menu of the, 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 the morning was so complex that there are set periods of grieving that were deemed acceptable based on your life you had passed. Now we don't have any of that. If you lose someone, you end up feeling lost yourself because you have no modern equivalent to those formalities. Blah. We need to follow, we need to allow ourselves to time to grieve, to feel the loss fully, but not allow it to consume us. So no, I am not afraid of death. But it is a waste to spend your life dreading the end of it. Ah, the time that we have here is brief and fleeting, occasionally cruel, but I think that love is precious to stare death in the face, live despite that. I think it's a noble existence. Let's save the morning for the dead. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Wow, that's beautiful. Drop them pants, boy. I can see them. I can see the moonlight. The moonlight? It's like afternoon still. I can see the moonlight in the bay glint off Damien's eyes. He smiles. We turn to the harbor and watch ships pass, breathing in the salty sea air. I look to Damien again, and I can't help but be entranced by his charm, his mystery. I find everything about him so fascinating. I lean in closer to Damien, closing my eyes as I do so. Huh. I'm so sorry. I have to take this. Cock blocked! Damien steps away to answer his phone. Oh no, I hope it isn't losing again. After speaking hushed tones for a few minutes, the moment of moments, Damien returns to me. Everything okay? Oh my. There's an emergency. Lucian? Hmm. No, thankfully. But I must take my leave. Oh. Okay, is there anything I can do to help? Hmm. Huh. Dads do have to stick together, right? You know it. Hmm. Then come. There isn't the time to waste. I've been cock blocked! For the last time, after a short drive in silence, we arrive at the rundown building in the outskirts of town. Where are we? It's better if I just show you. Oh no, you got cancer, boy? You dying? Or maybe someone you know is dying, and that's why you're comfortable with death. We're about to have a sad, we're about to have some sad stuff going on. I push the surprisingly heavy door, but I find myself, oh wait, no, this is like a, oh, there's like little dog things down here. He has, he has a dog, he has a sick doggy probably. A few rickety uh, chairs lie on the walls. There doesn't seem to be anyone inside the, uh, behind the front desk. There are a few paintings and pictures of the wall, but they're nondescript. Uh, I'm still unsure of what kind of place this even is. Ah. Wait here for a moment. I'll be right back. Damien walks off down the corridor, his boot heels echoing through the halls of the seemingly empty building. Distant howls echo from the place I can't see, and there's a faint scratching sound like claws on tile. I constantly peek down the hall and find a stall after stall of scared-looking dogs. A few of them noticed me and scared up the chain link fence, sticking their noses through the sniff of the air. What have I got myself into? Suddenly the light shut off. I panic. Unsure of where I am or how to get out, I stumble through the darkness, my breathing getting heavier and heavier. Damien? The lights finally turn back on. Hey, sailor. Mary? Mary, what are you doing here, Mary? Mary? I don't... I trust you the least. I trust you the least. I'm... Oh... We're good. Mary, what are you doing here? Uh, you weren't here for the fight club? Uh, I don't want to get punched in the face. Uh, Great, because there's an, this is an animal shelter. Uh, what? We take care of stray animals, and then people adopt stray animals. You see the pets, you walk in. Oh, I just, sorry. I just didn't really, I expect to volunteer at an animal shelter. Wow. Okay, kid. Way to put me in the box. Dames, you hear this baloney? Just one moment. Thunder cracks, the door bursts open, appear from the shadow I see. Damien? <laughs> um, hey. It's Damien. He looks completely different. No cloak, no Victorian era clothing, no makeup. I wasn't planning to share this side of me until much later, but I'm not as goth as you think. I, um, I am a systems administrator for the ID department of the Realty Com- Realty Com- <laughs> He's in the, He works at IT. I wear tennis shoes to work and I listen to Bruce Springsteen. I enjoy going to the hardware store and looking for storage solutions and I volunteer at the animal shelter in my spare time. I am boring. I am fascinated with Victorian history and my goth lifestyle that much is true. I'm just 
not at, not all that I am, and I need you to know that. Oh, uh, I need to kill the moment here, but there's someone pressing, there's some pressing business that needs to be attended to. Oh, right, it's Duchess Cordelia. Again? Who's Tortoise Cordelia? Cordella, Cordelia. She's one of the pups, gets out all the time. She somehow learned how to open doors, and now she's unstoppable. You can't lock doors? You guys don't know how to lock doors? Where did she get out? Oh, my cheek is so itchy. God dang. This morning, I went to sing sea shanties to the cats, and when I came there back there, she already bolted. I have to stay here with the pet, so I need you two to go find her. Of course. Where could she be? She always ends up running off the same place. Here, let me draw you a map. Mary starts scribbling the back of the pet adoption form. She's very smart, ruthless, even. You just stay on your toes to get her run. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll find her. What? You're a perfect little peach, Kempa. Ah, whatever, Mary. We just don't want her to get stuck outside when it's cold. Oh, I'll grab some treats so we can hit the road. Damien and I look over the map Mary created for us. See, there's this uh, this ending in the game. I think it's, I don't think you can actually play it, but there's like a cult ending. There's like files and stuff for it. And Mary's part of that. And it's all about like, who do you think lived in that house before you did? They've been killed and all this stuff. So every time I see Mary, I'm like, mm -mm. oh man, I'm nerd house, nerd's house. Where's nerd's house? Oh, oh yeah, we, we all live in like the circle here. That's nice. Where's nerd's house? No, oh, right there in the middle. At least you're not other nerd's house. <laughs> Looks like you're moving up in the pecking order. Is there an other nerd? Yeah, there's another nerd's house. Congrats, kiddo. Where should we head first? Let's go to the aquarium. Amy and I exit the parking lot and start driving towards town. I look over at him and he seems concerned. Should be too hard to find the Duchess, right? Pretty big pup. I was always a cat. Mary wasn't kidding when she said that dog was smart. One time she correctly guessed the winner of the Kentucky Derby. Ah, blah. It was a really great year for Bark, Bark, Bark. Mm, I don't know. What do you think our odds are, Kimpai? This will be easy. No sweat. If I could find a wrangled toddler who suddenly uh, decided that she's a princess of drywall and spend three hours finishing a toddler and uh, yeah, find a dog. It was Amanda. Amanda did that. Let's just hope for the best. No, he didn't like that, so let me try again then. Abandon all hope. But lo, look upon the garage creator of the heart he hath forsaken. Hell is empty. He liked that. <laughs> did you see it? Did you, did you see the, Did you see him? He liked that a lot. Nice. I thought that would cheer you up. Let's just hope for the best. We got this. It's like some weird movements of stuff. Sometimes it doesn't come on the screen, sometimes it does. They may not stop by the aquarium. Everything looks in order here, but might help to get out of the car and take a look. You see anything? Hmm. No dog here. Not even the sign of her. Did you know that penguins are considered the goth of the sea? Damien, I want to believe you so badly. <laughs> Let's go to the Bayside, I guess. We arrived back at Bayside. It's like old times, eh? I remember it as if it were yesterday. I mean, earlier today. So what do you think? Any side of the pooch? And yet, although who knows if she made it of one of these ships. The Dutch would do that? I wouldn't put the pastor to know how to navigate the rough seas and without a compass. Very smart. Pops? Damien, I turned to see my daughter. Amanda, what are you doing here? Do you think I just stayed inside all day vegging out on the couch? Vegging out? Oh, okay. I was like, what do you do? Eat vegetables all day? That's not a teenager. Uh, oh, she's vegging out watching TV? Oh, sorry. What are you doing? I'm heading home to veg out on the couch to watch TV. Had to get a burrito first. Young miss, have you seen a dog around here? Oh, you bet. I saw a Pomeranian with a bowl around a bow around his neck, and I saw a big old Doberman named Henry, and there was a stroller full of Yorkies and the Greyhound and the Golden Retriever. Did you see a Mastiff anywhere? Hmm, no dice. Well, I definitely have remembered that. I gotta run though. This Rito is about ten minutes before the cheese breaks down the molecular structure of tortilla makes it all soggy. You understand? I do. Of course. Have a lovely evening, Miss Dadlord. A softball field. Drive the softball field. It looks like Craig's team is practicing. I wonder if any of the kids saw something. Craig spots and jogs over a softball bat slug over his shoulder. Hey, bros, what's up? Craig, would you have happened to see a dog around here, have you? If one escaped from the animal shelter, we're trying to locate her. Mm, I don't think so, bros. Maybe one of the girls saw something. Girls! Hi, Amanda's dad. Hi, Lucian's dad. We have names. Girls, have you seen any dogs around here? There was a big dog here earlier. She ran off a while ago, though. I don't remember if she had an owner, but she really wanted to play. We tried to play fetch with her, but she just took the softball and ran. I think she ate it, actually. She was a lot of dog. Here, take another softball. Might come in handy later. Many thanks, Craig. Get the coffee spoon, I guess? We park in front of Matt's coffee shop and walk inside. It seems like a slow day. Matt's is behind the counter reading a book. Hey, Matt. Didn't expect to see you two today. What's up? Have you seen any stray dogs around? Can't say I have. You looking for one? Can you describe it? Can you describe them to me? Enormous. Uh, that pretty, pretty well covers it. 
Cool. I find strays digging food scraps in the alley in the back sometimes. I'll be sure to keep an eye out. We head back out of the car. Fear the hour is growing short. Well, let's make haste and find the Duchess by sundown. Amy's looking more stressed by the minute. I gotta think of something to lighten the mood. Mm-hmm. Let's make him let's make some cucumbers pop out! How many gosses does it take to screw in a light bulb? I don't know how many. One. Gosses are very capable, especially when looking for a dog. Yeah! <laughs> Got him! What 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 what? What 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 what? Ah, oh, Damien smiles to himself. I keep reading. I keep reading Damien's directions in the map. We drive around. Uh, let's go to the cul-de-sac then. Uh, we're driving through the cul-de-sac. Everything looks pretty normal. It looks like Brian's doing some yard work. We we'll pull into Brian's driveway and hop out. This is the cul-de-sac. This looks like we're downtown. It's like the shopping places behind us. This is not the right background. All right, whatever. <laughs> hey, don't step on the grass. I just mowed. Have you seen any unusual activity in the area today? Aside from your underwater lawn? Oh, here we go. How dare you. I take my lawn care very seriously. Kenpai, please. You haven't seen a dog run through there, have you? Well, a few hours ago, I heard Maxwell barking at something. Then I came outside my garden. It had torn to shreds. It's going to take a while to re-till the soil. Hmm, could be that dog or the rather feisty raccoon. Whatever it was, must have been hungry. Ate all my tomatoes. I'm very sorry to hear about your garden. If you need assistance restoring to its full former glory, please do not hesitate to contact me. Oh. Will do, buddy. Good luck finding that dog. Hmm, she's probably still hungry. I wonder if she's looking for food somewhere. So, a coffee spoon, maybe? A coffee spoon. Hey, Matt. Guys, I think I may have seen your dog you're looking for. She did. A brown mastiff? Size of a house? Yeah, I saw it digging through the trash in the back. Anyway, I tried to get closer, though. To see what direction it ran in? Matt thinks for a second. If I'd been running east, I think. That pup tore through the, the three pans of old faithful banana bread. Uh, Want to take some of the road just in case? Sure thing. Matt packs us up a slice. Thanks for the slice. The road slice. The grateful bre the grateful banana bread is, is so good. I think he meant <laughs> to give it for the dog. Right, I meant it's going to be so good for that dog to eat. All right, I feel like we're on the right track. You think? If we keep this up, we'll find Duchess in no time. Hey, if you like dogs so much, why don't you have any? Lucy is severely allergic. I wouldn't want to put them through that. Ah, blah. But we're still the dog in my life. I'm so, I'm so grateful. Forgot his voice already. There's about to be one more dog in your life, buddy. Splendid attitude. Let's not waste any more time. Barely. Let's go to the cul-de-sac. We're out of the cul-de-sac to find everything looking normal. Except, uh-oh, Hugo's front door is wide open. She can open doors. This is classic Duchess of Cordella, the telltale sign. We should approach with caution. Whatever goes down in there, I've got your back. We crept to the porch and step inside. Sitting in the front of the Hugo's living room, <laughs> she owns the dang place, one of the biggest dogs I've ever seen. Woof. Well, she hasn't broken anything in here yet. Wonderful! Now all I have to do is get this leash on her before she tries to escape again and get out of here before Hugo comes. Easy peasy. Duchess, come here. The Duchess eyes Damien warily. She approaches, she begins to growl. She's on her guard. We'll need another plan. Let's try uh, the banana bread. Yeah! Oh God! Made him so goddamn wet! So goddamn wet! Oh! That's what I'm talking about! Reach the pocket, pull out with a sl uh, slice of grateful banana bread Matt gave to me. Duchess sniffs the air and uh, hones in on the bread. Come here, girl. Nice and easy. I got some yummy homemade vegan and possibly gluten-free gluten -free banana bread, if that's what you're into. I mean, it's, it's banana bread. You, you really have to call it vegan? I mean, maybe. I get uh, it. make eggs. No eggs, no milk. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, I always, it, gets, it always gets on my nerves when it's like, this is, this is vegan. I'm like, I don't give a crap. Just feed me. I'm hungry. The Duchess constantly approaches me and gives me a bread good sniff and, uh, before gently taking it from my hand, dropping it on the ground like a dog always do for some reason. She crawls up and starts munching on the bread. Success. Amy walks up behind Duchess and attacks the leash to her collar. She immediately notices and starts whining. It's time to go now, Duchess. Damien gives a tug on the leash. She won't move. Duchess, what happened to our rapport? You and I used to be bosom buddies. She doesn't move. She's huge. No way can even try to lift her. Well, this is a weird situation to be in. I think we're literally trespassing our friend's house with this large dog. He left his door unlocked. I guess he's mowing. What are you nerds doing? Ernest stands in the doorway with a plate, plate of pizza rolls. What flavor of pizza rolls are those? Uh, pepperoni blast. Nice. Duchess knows Ernest starts pulling against the leash. Why is this dog in my house? It's a long... Duchess suddenly breaks free of Damien's grip and hurls towards Ernest. Ah! Ernest and Duchess fall to the ground. Pizza rolls everywhere. This is bad. Ernest, are you okay? Ernest feeds Duchess a pizza roll. Hey, she likes pizza rolls. Ernest sits up the dog keeps licking his face. Oh, hey. Hugo stands in the door looking like he's at a loss for words. Oh, it's Hugo. I thought it was Brian's house. My bad. Whoa. What? Why are you- who, whose dog is this? 
It's a long story, but it involves a large door. A large dog. A la large dog who knows how to open doors. Boof. Hugo, may I present you Duchess Cordelia. Cordelia, I don't know. <sighs> how do you do? Borf. We're friends. That just looks at Ernest's face. She's from the local animal shelter and she's got out. We've been chasing her all around town. Your house was our final stop. Dad, can we keep her? <sighs> Ernest, I don't know if we can take care what? of a... Uh, wait, did you just call me dad? Come on, please. Look how cute she is. You go size. Oh. We had been talking about adopting a dog for a while. But you have to promise she'll take care of her. Oh, wow, so easy. Such an easy adoption. This dog's broken into your house. It can open doors and do whatever it wants. It's huge. Sure, do you want it? Of course. Yeah, I'll give her all the pizza rolls or little hard desires. I still remember what's in the back of this map and pull a pen out of my pocket. Got the forms ready for you if you're interested in it. <laughs> I'll even waive the adoption fee since you know we're technically broken through the household. Well, all right, it's a deal. Hugo steps in the porch, other than the sides, signs the form while Ernest plays the Duchess inside. He sure seems to be happy with his new fr new friend. Oh. I know, he called me dad, can you believe it? That's all you gotta do is call him dad, I guess. Damien places a hand on Hugo's shoulder. I certainly can. I think this would be really good for Ernest. You should teach him some responsibility. You should probably look into getting better locks on your doors, though. The Duchess is a vile one, but do right by her and she'll, do you, she'll love you too forever. Thank you. Long story short, the Duchess now lives happily home. Neither of us are charged for breaking and entering. So all in all, I think it was a fine day's work. Nice work, you two. Mm. Kenpai, you could be a valuable asset of our team of volunteers, you know. If you ever feel like petting some puppies, hit me up. Mary, I always feel like petting puppies. Ah. Good to know. Well, I'll catch you fellas later. Is she missing two fingers or is she like scratching herself? I don't know. I can never tell. Maybe she's just missing fingers. And maybe I want to touch her puppies. Mary starts to leave. And one last thing. Oh, she has fingers. Never mind. Damien's been telling me about you. Glad he finally brought you around. Oh, yeah. Damien's my special boy. I love him. We go way back, and I've, and I've got a vested interest in his, his health, success, and well-being. If you ever heard him, Maddie, hey. you can fill out the blanks. She'll kill me like you did the last person that lived in my house. Gulp. Yes, ma'am. Mary leaves me alone with Damien. Are we going to get naked with the dogs? So, about the whole goth thing, blah, I um, completely understand if you aren't interested in me anymore. What? Uh, am I missing something here? I'm not the cool goth prince. I'm boring. I own five pairs of tinny shoes. I wear dumb glasses. You don't care. Don't you care? You look so nervous. David, do you really think I only like you because of the goth stuff? That's all cool, but the best thing about you is how passionate you are about the things you love. History, art, Victorian fashion, dogs, storage solutions, it doesn't matter what it is. You care, and that's awesome. And also, the glasses are very cute. You don't think I'm boring at all? If you're boring, then I don't wanna, I don't wanna know what that makes me. I spend too much time online shopping for flashlights. I get excited to mobile on on Saturdays. I get cranky about com uh, commercials being too loud. I've been thinking about making my own peanut butter. Then maybe we can be boring together? It would never be boring if it was with you. Damien suddenly closes the gap between us and pulls me into a hug. He buries his face in my shoulder. His hair smells like lavender and rosemary. I was so scared you wouldn't like me. Quite the opposite. Damien pulls away for a second and looks me in the eyes. With colored contacts, his eyes are so dark. Without the colored contacts, his eyes are so dark and soulful. May I kiss you? Thou art welcome. Ah, oh, yeah! Get them, get, that, get them eggplants out, baby! Get that eggplant out. Verily, you may take upon you may take upon yourself the you know what? Just kiss me. He smiles and slightly leans in. Give me a gentle kiss. Damien pulls away and gives me an intense look. Do you want to have me take care of the puppies? <laughs> yes. Uh, Damien and I are back at the cul-de-sac, our fingers intertwined like proper gentlemen. He walks me to my doorstep. Oh. Uh, this was Lovely. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for everything. I'm very happy I can be myself around you. Ah, blah. I'm glad, but I have one request. What's that? Can we keep seeing each other letters? Oh. But of course. Damien kisses me one last time before turning around and heading home. Man, runs back to the couch in the window and tries to look nonchalant as possible. Hello, father. I was sitting here on the couch this entire time. Hi, Amanda. So, are you guys like starting a vampire coven together? Oh, plot twist. 
Mothman, Damien's actually Mothman. I didn't see it coming either. Genius. Well, whatever's happening, I'm really glad you two are happy. You deserve it, Dad. Oh shucks, I'm going to bed. Catch you in the morning. Sure thing. Let me wait the room and fall in bed with my heart full excitement. Yeah, yeah. Unlock way different than uh, Joseph's date where he just like ravaged me. He gave me the business. Ass ranking. Yeah, yeah. He Did it. Slayed in the Lost Boys. Got it. Slayed in the Lost Boys. Whatever, guy. All right. I think I have everything that matched. Should be here any minute now. Car in the driveway. Oh yeah. Okay. This is the part where it's like her celebration. So we're gonna we we we've done this already, and we're just gonna we're just gonna scroll. She got accepted into a school, and now she's going, and we're like giving her a little the little party, and all the dads are here. Yeah. Damien's got his alternate outfit on. Yeah. I'll go to Mary and uh, have, having a lively conversation with Amanda. Okay, so this is new. This is different. We have a real fluffy, uh, I don't know what that word is, Samoid right now. His name is Harold. Loves belly rubs. He also likes to lick your face if you get too close, as do all dogs. Miss Christensen, thank you so much for telling uh, telling me in great detail about every single dog currently at the animal shelter. Please, tell me about the the, the, the Afghan with the three, leg, the three legs again. Sure, Quadro, we call him. It's one of those ironic nicknames. You know, if you're really interested, I could probably steal one for you. Really? Nah, but I could get you to meet all of them. We always could use extra hands around the shelter. Mm. If those extra hands also happen to steal a dog, well, that you two are able to bond over a cute dog. It really warms my heart. She's so evil looking though. Look at her. You know, you know she's up to something. Dad, we're having a moment. Mm. Hey, sailor, your kid's a good egg. Where's your goth prince? You two are usually attached to the hip these days. He's uh, he's around. Stellar. Mary turns her attention to Amanda. Mm. It's not too hard to sneak a dog into college. Trust me, I did it plenty back in the day. At one point, I had three cats in the living room. Living in my dorm, excuse me. I decided to leave them to it. All of a sudden, a huge dog leaves in my arms. Duchess! Hugo and Ernest were up to me. The Duchess gives me a face a few broad licks and hops down. Bull crap. Stop letting dogs lick you in the face. It's not as great as you think it is, especially a big dog like this. I have a very huge dog. You don't want that thing licking you in the face. It's sticky and a lot of slobber. <laughs> We're working on that. Got her in disciplinary classes. She's a wild spirit who runs where she may. I don't mind at all. Looks like the three of you are getting along nicely. She's a valuable addition to the clan. If I hold up my homework in front of her, she'll eat it. Cool. Uh, we'll deal with that later. Duchess Cordella spots a squirrel and starts across the yard. Ernest follows her laughing. He's actually been a lot more manageable lately. I think taking care of the dog is good for him. Thanks for breaking into my house, I guess. Anytime. And this guy, don't care. Get out of here. Don't care. Oh, wait, Lucian. Anytime, bud. I knew we had a, cock, a, a rocky start. I, thought, I was going to say a cocky rock star for some reason. I uh, hope you know how much your dad cares about you. Um, yeah. My dad's had a rough couple of years, and I know that it must not have been easy to raise me alone. He's kind of a weird guy, but I love him a lot. It seems like you make him happy. So, you're cool in my book. Thank you, Lucian. That means a lot to me. Sure. Let me know if you want to give you give you a stick and poke sometime. Thanks for coming by, Lucian. See you around, Kenpai. Take a seat next to Damien as the last guest, ma last guest makes their way at the party. Hopefully, this guy doesn't dump me like the last guy did. Blah, blah, I want to drink your blood. Did you know the Victoria Nero called the bench city boys? What, really? I'm kidding, Kenpai, but what if? It's good to see you in your civvies again. Thank you. I had a revelation the other day, Kenpai. I think it is largely due to your continued influence upon me. There's a version of myself I might have been embarrassed to show you my true form, my information technology form. But what you did, what you said about me, how my passion was about truly admired and embroiled me to think my, like myself regardless of how I choose to dress and act. Instead of separate entities, they are simply different facets of my life. A three-dimensional human being with his own thoughts, wants, and needs. Blah, I love dressing the way I do, but feeling constricted by what I thought was my own personal brand made me lose sight of why I did this in the first place, to make myself happy. I placed my hand on Damien's I feel light squeeze, looking up and greeted by Damien's warm smile. I'm trying to be more comfortable with who I am, rather than dwelling on who I could be to other people. I can't stop smiling, I'm so proud of him. Damien, I'm so happy for you to realize that you're a dog-loving goth. Me too, can't I? Me too. I feel myself inching closer and closer to Damien. I go to brush a lock of hair of his face, and I'm shocked at how soft it is. How is your hair so soft? Dog shampoo. <laughs> I keep running my hair down his hair, and he leans closer to me. Uh, <laughs> dog shampoo, of course. 
Legs are in my face, struck the cheeks with his thumb. If you know, a public display of affections are considered scandalous in the Victorian era. Damien pulls me in for a kiss, but I think I can make an exception for you. Blah! And he bites my neck and I die. Oh, L'Oreal. Maybe she's worth it. Maybe it's Maybelline. That was a fun one. Not as, uh, not as intense as Joseph's for sure, but it was nice. <laughs> Daddy. Daddy, daddy. Oh, he's in the graveyard. We did it. We did it. Damien has been defeated. Less drama, just more, I like animals, let's do it kind of thing. And we don't even do it. We take care of puppies and smooch all the time. So easy peasy. Thank you guys very much for watching this episode of Dream Daddy with uh, Damien. Thank you guys. And I will see you guys next episode. We'll date another dad. Probably not Robert because I hate Robert. <laughs> see you guys later. Until then, stay close to my friends. Bye.